and welcome to Urban Smash TV. My name's Stephen Wemba, and thank you for joining us this evening on a Friday night. Now, before we start, we must say um, our hearts go out to the royal family this evening. Um, you may have heard the news, Prince Philip has died at the age of 99. So our thoughts and prayers go out to the Queen and the royal family at this time. Um, it's a difficult moment because obviously normally when you know someone from the royal family dies you know we're able to sort of get together and mourn and you know and bring flowers but um because of covid and restrictions um it may be a, a different way of celebrating you know celebrating the life um of someone that has lost so i hope we can all come together in some way whether we you know celebrate his life at home um but yeah, we just wanted to say that our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. But thank you for everyone that's joining in this evening. Lovely to see you. Um, but for those of you that are joining in and thinking, what is Urban Smash TV? What is it all about? Well, let me tell you. Um, Urban Smash TV is a, an online platform um, where we interview established artists, um, emerging artists. Um, and for those of you out there thinking, you know, I'd love to be an actor, you know, a singer, performer, whatever, and you just don't know how or you want some advice and um, this is the platform we you can watch our previous videos on youtube um on instagram and um, all the social you know networks jump on have a look check out our past interviews because we have um been speaking to so many people over the last couple of years and they've got some great advice that could really help you out so um so do check those old videos out but today um i have a special guest and i've just seen her pop up hello um so we will be chatting to uh Raksha host in just a minute um but I wanted to make sure all of you guys had a lovely Easter holiday. Um, the four days we had off. I mean, wow, four days mean a lot, right? <laughs> if you work full time and you know you've got four days off, oh, it's heaven. But um, the weather we had in the UK was a bit crazy, I must say. We had snow on one day and sun the next day. I mean... I don't know, but <laughs> that's what happens when you live in the UK. If you're not from the UK, then drop us a comment below and let me know how your Easter weekend went. Um, now, don't forget, you can um, drop a question in the comments below. Um, any questions you've got for Raksha, do drop them and we'll answer them in the show as well. Now, for those of you that don't know, next Monday in the UK, the salons and hairdressers open up. So don't worry. <laughs> I know I've been get cutting my own hair, but for those of you that haven't been able to do your own, on Monday, in a couple of days' time, you'll be able to get your hair sorted out. So I can see some very happy people from next week. Don't you worry, it's going to be good. Um, oh, thank you very much. Joe said, looking good. Thank you. Put this on. Didn't know if I'd blend into it. So hopefully you can see me and I am wearing a jumper. It's not my skin. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let me get my guest onto the show. Um, now, um, Raksha Host, she has portrayed various roles in TV, series, film and theatre. I cannot wait to, to speak to her right now. Let's get her on. Let's see. Um, oh. So Raksha, if you can request to join, then I'll be able to accept you. So let's see if that works. That's the thing about technology, eh? It's fun. But when it's live, it's like, oh, we just hope it works. Yeah. So hopefully, um, if you can hear me, if you request to join, you'll be able to do it. Uh, well done. I've joined now as well. See if you can accept. Hello, Sophie. Thank you for joining tonight. Hope you are well. Thank you. EPS got London. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh, look how handsome you look. My Lord. What's that? I said, look at how handsome you look. Oh, thank you too. Look at you. This is just a filter. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just a filter. <laughs> yeah. off, you'll be, you'll be shocked. <laughs> how do you look good? <laughs> thank you. Technical issue and all that. Are you, yes, we're there. We're there. Yes. My phone has literally just said to me, uh, 
battery is about to end. So I'm like, <laughs> don't worry, I've got my charger here. Um, which is okay. Cool. Um, but no, thank you for coming on the show. It's a, a pleasure. When I found out that the team um, reached out to you and uh, you were happy to come on, I was thrilled. Um, because, oh. you know, it, it's nice to be able to speak to you and, and, and to get some of your advice, you know, especially looking through your Instagram and the things you've done. Um, you know, you've said mm. a lot and it, it's touched me and I hope we can obviously um, speak today and um, and obviously be able to yeah. you know, be advice, help someone else out there who is watching. But um, before we start, we do yes. normally with our guests like to do a couple of questions that some of your fans have reached out throughout the week because they knew you were coming on and they were like, we've got some questions. Mm. We picked three of them that are quite funny. Um, um, so we're going to go for it. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question number one. So this is from the team that said this is from Jack from London. He has asked, who inspired you? Doesn't have to be a celebrity, it could be family, friend, but who at the moment or is up there and inspires you? Uh, my mom inspires me, actually. Yeah. And because of the fact that she raised two children, my, me and my sister, um, all by herself. And I don't know how she did it, but she did do it. And we're still alive. Right. So <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> I think um, I, I, it's hard. I've only just got a puppy, right? So I've been saying to my mum recently, I, you know, a puppy's not a child, but I'm like, I don't know how mm. you did it, mum. You raised four boys. Like, how did you work full time? And how did you keep us alive and cooking? I'm like, you made it so easy. You didn't ever complain. But I have a puppy and I'm crying. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> I think parents, you know, whoever brought you up, carers, I think they're just amazing people in this world. So. I love the answer. There yeah. you go, Jack from London. There you have it. Uh, we've got another question from Sarah from Bath. Oh, hello, Sarah, if you're tuning in. Um, mm -hmm. Yuna just joined. Hello, Yuna. Lovely to see you. Um, so Sarah said, what's your dream job? Would it be in TV, film or theatre? <gasps> um, it would be in film. Film, okay. Definitely. Oh, yeah, right. it would be in film. There you yeah. Go. Okay. Um, <laughs> Last question from Susie, um, all the way up in Manchester. Oh, hello, Susie. Um, what app could you not live without on your phone? That's really good. I don't know what I'd say. Wow, that's a really good question. We have a lot of apps. Now I have to think about it. <laughs> um, which app, right? Yeah. Could you not live without? I really don't want to give this answer, but I, I'm not very trendy, by the way, so I don't have a lot of apps, but it's probably going to be a very boring one um, and not probably an ethically right one, but it's going to be WhatsApp because I just communicate a lot. I do everything on WhatsApp, voice messages, yeah. text messages, calling, everything. Yeah, I would say WhatsApp as well. I was thinking about that question and WhatsApp was my one because it's such a yeah. great app where you can just send videos and you know, before back in the days, you had to think about your text and like, you know, it couldn't be too much because it would cost 20p. <laughs> now you can just send yeah. everything for free. It's like, wow. So, uh, so good true. But also, also because I'm living in a different country than most of my like family and friends, uh, they live in the Netherlands and I live here. So it's just nice to be yeah. able to communicate with them. True. Um, Eunice just made me laugh. Um, I love that. She said it will be her bus time app. I love it. It's true, you know, transport app or that. I, that's would probably be my second one, you know, just you need to know. <laughs> so, no, yeah. Thank you. Um, don't forget, if you're just joining now, welcome to the show, Urban Smash TV. Um, drop your comments below and um, we will say hello. Hello, Camilio. I think I've said that right. 32. Hello. 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 Um, okay, so let's delve into it. Um, thank you again for coming on the show. Um, what we wanted to find out as well from you is how you've been over the year and obviously we're all around the world in similar situations during you know having to stay at home and live life in lockdown how have you managed um as an actor you know have you been able to still work has it been very different being on set with masks and things like that how's life been mm -hmm. this year i think um um generally it was really interesting because some days I was very productive and effective and efficient and uh, highly motivated. And then other days I just seemed to have forgotten how to get out of bed and be happy. It was such a, so strange. Um, and when it comes to acting, I haven't, I, I wasn't able to do anything. 
Um, so I, I just invested more in writing, which I really love to do. I love to write. Uh, and I discovered screenwriting as well. So now I'm just practicing that skill. Um, I think it's just that eagerness of wanting to create. Yeah. Yeah. And then finding different ways. Yeah. Do you think then, because a lot of people yeah, we've spoken to um, this last year have said the same thing, you know, um, they've not been able to, you know, perform on stage or whatever, and, um, but then they've taken up a new form of being creative. They've, you know, they've been writing, they've been, you know, filming their own things and um, being creative on TikTok. Um, do you think this year has allowed you and other people to t take a break and stop and look within and be creative differently? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And ask myself the question, what do you actually want? What do you want? What do you want over and over again? Um, is it maybe it isn't acting? Mm. Is it still acting? Just being very, very honest uh, with myself um, and then discovering all these new things and setting up a life coaching business, for instance. Um, but I have definitely gone inside and asked myself a lot of questions about what the heck am I doing with my life? Um, am I still on course or not? Is this really what I want? Um, and how am I going to get there? Um, I think it's, yeah, very special, special journey mm. um, this past year. Yeah. I suppose as well, it's been, um, for everyone, this is not something we would have ever predicted that we would live through. Mm -hmm. you know? I suppose growing up, I thought maybe we'd live through another war, or, you know, what would that be like? But I never thought a pandemic can live in, stay and be locked down at home. But you, um, you said something amazing there, you know, you happen to look within and ask yourself that question, like, am I on the right path? Am I, what am I doing? Is it, is it, is it right? You know, ha having, think, you know, been thinking about it for the last year, what have you come at, you know, what's your outcome? Are you, are you still happy you're on this path? Or have you decided to sort of take a different turn? I am, you know, and with setting up this life coaching business during a pandemic, um, I have been actually wondering, what am I actually doing? 50% I've invested in a life coaching business and a 50% in acting. And shouldn't I just do one thing 100%? That's what they say, you know, shouldn't I just do it? What am I doing? And, and I got really stressed out about it, to be honest, about having the feeling that I had to make a decision. Mm. But then one day, something clicked in my mind. And I thought, I am not necessarily in the industry of acting and trying to push myself in that or in the industry of life coaching and push myself in that, that specific part. But I'm in the industry of character building. Okay. Because that's basically what I do when I break down a script and I build a character. I ask the questions, okay, so what do I want as this character? Uh, what do I need? What obstacles am I facing? What actions am I going to take to overcome those obstacles? What do I need to learn? Those are exactly the same questions that I ask clients as a life coach. Right. So suddenly I thought, wow, so being a life coach is making me a better actor and acting is making me a better life coach. So it was just this moment of realizing I don't have to push myself into an industry. Um, I can just say, why don't I create my own industry? I'm an industry of character building and everything that fits within that, I do. And that's it. That's amazing. And I think that's yeah. so cool to be able to look at it that way. Because I think that people put a lot of pressure on themselves. And you're right, you'd like, you know, I should be just focusing on one thing and that's it. But at the same time, if you look at it like how you've looked at it and thought, actually, I could do both and they both can help you know, each other, um, rather than just exactly. thinking, I can't do both. Um, my mum always used to say, like, you know, have your eggs in different baskets, you know, because that way, you know, they all help each other. And if something fails or something doesn't work out, then you've <laughs> still got your hands in, you know, different pies and you don't just um, lose out. So I like your mum, your mum sounds like a smart woman. <laughs> she's, not <laughs> <as well. laughs> she's not watching. <laughs> she's not watching. <laughs> so, um, would you then say, um, because obviously for you, you've, you know, you've um, invested in sort of life coaching. Would you say for other performers out there, other artists have had enough support from, you know, the, the government? Have they done enough to, to help? Um, or would you say there could be more to help people in the arts? I think there could be more. But what I loved seeing is that there was this whole community that suddenly stood up uh, from the arts industry and said, oh, listen, this, we are essential here. You know, what we're doing, what we're creating. I think um, people started to 
I don't know, respect is the, but appreciate the art of storytelling more and the fact that we need content. We actually need the content. We, you don't just want it, we need it. Yeah, exactly. um, and I think that's so powerful. So that's definitely a positive thing that came out of this. Um, and uh, I, I think this should also always get more support. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. And you're right, it's made people really sit back and think, yeah, we do need it, don't we? You know, it's, it's part yeah. of, been part of, you know, life for centuries. Um, and you need that, you know, release of, you know, be able to switch off from life and to engage in performance and, yeah. and singing or, you know, performing arts or whatever. Um, it does, it does help the soul, I think, it, you know, it's really good. Yeah. Um, now, and also, sometimes I have asked myself, is what I'm doing as an actress, is that, how meaningful is that? And how much, how am I serving other people? And what am I giving to the world? Like, I'm not a doctor or anything. Like, am I saving lives or what, what exactly, like, what meaning does it have? But like, now I realize it has a lot yeah. of meaning, just a confirmation. Not that I realize it's just a confirmation. Yeah, gosh, that's amazing. That's so true. I didn't think of it like that, but you're right. And I think it's very, that's an important question for those of you watching, you know, to think, and what, and what I'm doing, am I serving? You know, it, does it have a higher place? You know, just like you said, if you're acting, you can just think, well, hey, I'm just acting. Is it just for me? Is it an ego thing? You know, I'm an actress and whatever. But actually, yeah. you are giving back, and you're 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 entertaining, and you're um, whether yeah. it's you know a, a drama piece, a sad piece, a happy piece. You know, you're giving back to people who are watching you on the screen. Um, and I think you're a brilliant, brilliant um, actor. Honestly, I've seen you, the clips of you in different things and I just think you, you're wonderful. So for those of you that don't know, you've got to check her out. Um, um, please do. Um, now, I did want to ask as well. So um, you mentioned, obviously, you know, you've spoken about confidence um, in the past. Confidence for you then, tell us a little bit about that. Has that something that you've developed over time or have you always been confident? And especially, you know, acting, where it can be quite a, a scary thing to do, whether it's on stage or um, or filming something where you've got a, a team full of people behind the cameras that no one sees. That takes guts and you need to be confident, right? Have you always been confident? No, no. I, I grew up as a very shy kid. I was really shy. I was scared of everything. I was scared of my own voice, so I didn't speak. Right. Um, I spent, like, I had to, I had to redo, what was it, like, in elementary class? It's like the first, first grade, do you call it that in English? Um, yeah. The first class? Like, um, reception, I think we call it normally reception. Mm. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah because. Yes, because I, I didn't have any social skills. I was, t I was too scared to do anything, basically, to go outside. So I, I didn't have confidence at all. Um, and so it was gradually um, that I had to build my confidence. Mm. And especially as an actor, you need to have confidence. Mm. Um, so you need to... Um, I think, you know what, people say that... You need to have confidence before you can do something. But I have a theory which says the other way around. Like right. you have to do something and then you build your confidence. Right. See, that's what, um, about what you said, because that's what I watched one of your past interviews and you said that. And I went, oh, my God, I never thought of it like that. And it's so true. <laughs> and I was just saying to everyone there on my behalf this evening, I said, it's right. You, you just sometimes you might have no confidence in doing something, but you've just got to try. And then by trying and doing so, then you become confident at it. But you would never know exactly. if you'd be a confident person without trying. So I thought exactly. that was so I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. When did you come up with that? Was it just over time or is it recently you you've had that theory? Um, you know, I love my own theories. I have theories all the time, so <laughs> I didn't even know. Like <laughs> Just make my own theories <laughs> but uh i think like everything i've learned in life i have made a lot of mistakes in life and i still make mistakes um but i do have programmed myself to see the lesson in my mistakes and i think that's the difference in what i used to do i would just make mistakes and then fall flat on my face mm -hmm. and now like i've trained myself to see a lesson in it and that really helps but it, because it helps me grow yeah no absolutely yeah um now, a lot of people have asked as well, um, you've been, you know, acting for many years. What, has there been a production that you've absolutely, oh, sorry. Um, 
there been a production that you've really enjoyed um, or you've learned a lot from it, um, whether that's been on stage or film or TV series? Um, can you think back to one particular? Yeah, I have written and performed my own storytelling show. Okay. Um, it's called uh, Dr. Jekyll and Miss Hyde, and it's about a woman who struggles with uh, sex addiction, an addiction that most people don't talk about and most people don't know anything about. And I love talking and um, uh, performing very um, uh, subjects that make people feel uncomfortable because I feel like in that discomfort is a lot of truth. That's the reason why we're not talking about it. And that's the reason that it makes us feel uncomfortable. Um, and doing that show, writing it, first of all, and then putting it together and then performing it for the first time, um, that was such a adventure, a struggle, okay. especially a struggle. Um, but I've learned so much of it. And I think confidence. Yes. Um, it, yes. <laughs> especially doing something you've never done before and then putting it together in probably 10 days and then standing on stage and performing for in this, like my first show was sold out. Wow. Congrats. So I didn't, yeah. And I hardly knew what I was doing actually. And um, all these people were watching me, but it, it was just, it has stopped me so much. It's given me so much confidence. Okay. It has learned me a new skill, the skill of storytelling. Wow. Um, so that's totally in line with just, if you get an opportunity, just, just do it, yeah. just do it and yeah. see what happens. No, exactly. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, and it's, it's taking risk, isn't it? It's scary, but just do it. You're right. That saying, uh, no, just do it back in the days. I don't know if that's still there saying there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it. Just do it. Uh, no, cool. Now, I do want to touch on something that's, um, you know, quite sensitive. And I know you've spoken about it um, on your Instagram. Um, and I think it's very brave. To, to speak about something that you've gone through, um, but to open up to social media where it can sometimes be the response you can, you, the response you get back is never always positive. Um, so you're very brave. Um, but I also think it's amazing that you've shared your story, um, which is a suicide attempt, um, because so many other people have either been very down especially this year suffered with their mental health mm. and we don't always talk about things you know things are always like you know too taboo or brushed under the carpet or, you know you just carry on and keep your head up high but i think this year we have all learned to to speak about things because by speaking you you will help someone else um, and i wanted to ask how you've been since then um how's your mental health at the moment and and what are you doing to help yourself not get back into that dark place are there any tactics that maybe you can share someone else who's watching um who goes you know i'm really struggling and i think the only way out is just to end my life but is there anything you've got in place to help yourself that could help someone else mm, good question yeah um i have had to learn um, to what my coping skills are. I had to learn those coping skills. I think some people are like, are born with it as natural coping skills and some people don't. So they just need to learn it. Uh, and it's very, very personal what your coping skills are. And for me, it was, I, I as I said, when I was a kid, I was really shy. I, nobody has ever taught me how to speak about things or how to share things. Yeah. Um, and what I learned from my suicide attempt when I was 21 is that, you know, if you walk around with all this anger inside of you and, but also all this sadness and all this disappointment inside of you, you're, you're, you're carrying this enormous weight around and, um, that weight keeps you from moving forward because you have so much baggage then you, you, you can hardly move, Right. So it makes you stand still. And then you see everybody who's living their life and they're moving forward, but you're just still in the same spot. So you have to find a way of getting rid of that baggage. You have to deal with it. And I think one of the best ways is to share it. Okay. Um, and one thing is to actually speak about it. But another thing is to find your channel. And some people do it with acting 
and some with music and some with writing and everybody has their own channel of dealing with and sharing their pain, but also turning that pain into something positive. Mm. And my coping skills are going back to the source of energy in my life. What gives me energy? So one of the things is nature. I have to go outside. Uh, I have to find nature somewhere in this city. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, right. and secondly, you go. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. And secondly, it's um, it's um, picking up the phone and calling someone because I I need to be out of my system instead of me carrying it around. I need to get it out. Um, so it's calling uh, someone, and it doesn't always have to be dramatic. I called my mom the other day, and I said, "I'm not feeling really good about myself today. Can you please just tell me a story?" And then my mom loves talking and she loves telling stories. So she could just go on and on and on for hours. But it did make me realize that um, in like 20 minutes, I'd forgotten all about myself and I just put all my focus on her. Uh, and I was actually making two people happy at the same time because I allowed her to take care of me. I allowed her to, yeah. to share a story with me, which she loves. And I was also getting happy because she was giving me all this love. Um, and then the third thing is to create just create, even if it's writing or just create to get it out of my system. Um, I think that's really, really important. Yeah. Gosh, that's beautiful. Um, and I'm seeing some of the comments below as well. Um, do you think it's hard then? Because like you said, like normally if you, if, you, if you're passionate about, you know, being creative, you know, or you, or you like to, I don't know, play sports or just go out and let that, if you're carrying so much of that that energy with you, but what I'm trying to say is, do you think it's been a lot harder for people this year because they're yeah. not able to release that energy? Whereas normally you could go, right, I'm gonna, I've had a horrible week, but I'm gonna go out and just go crazy and you know have a drink. But people have not been able to do so because the, the rate at the moment is so high with people, you know. Um, suicide attempts and, and, and mental people's mental health over the last year. But do you think it's harder this year because we've not been able to release that? Yeah, definitely. Mm. And I had my depressive moments as well. And I had those moments, you know, depression never leaves your body. Mm. I think it never leaves your body. Um, your suicidal uh, thoughts will never leave your body because in moments that, you know, there's crisis, they're always going to come back. Uh, always. Mm. Um, so th th the trick is to be able to predict it yeah. when there's going to be a crisis to be able to know like, oh yeah, so that means that yeah. the thoughts are going to come back so I can already expect them. I can already act on it, yeah. but it's really, oh. really, really hard. And especially this year, it's been really hard. Um, and some moments, you know, when they come back, the only thing I tell myself is 24 hours. I just need 24 hours because I know tomorrow I'm going to feel better, but I just need these 24 hours to make it through. And then I know it's going to go, go better tomorrow. That's it. Beautiful. And that's how I cope. Mm. Yeah. I love that. And I think I'll take that away as well. Because I, 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 and there's a, there's a passage, um, you know, for those religious, I, I'm not um, religious. I, I would say more spiritual, but um, in the Bible, growing up as a Christian, there was a, a phase, uh, this too shall pass. And it's that saying of, you know, it's, whatever you're going through won't last forever. You know, the pain you're feeling won't last. So it will pass. You just, like you said, got to get through the day, got to get through 24 hours and tomorrow will be another day. And, um, and you'll be able to experience life in a different way. But that's, that's beautiful. And I, I hope that's been able to help uh, those of you that are watching uh, tonight. And I'm seeing some messages as well saying, yes, it has been um, a difficult year for um, Camilo. Um, and she's just said, that's what I was going to say. It's always um an illness that you have to go through yeah and it's true and, and you just mentioned well it's something mm. very it's not you know you've been there done it and move on and you, you know you'll be happy forever it's it's something that can creep up but it's how do you deal with it and it's you no know, it yeah. thing um noticing it when it's coming that depression and going right what can i do so yeah. um thank you for sharing. and also the fact thank you um and also i see that someone is writing that you, you don't know of anyone anyone else is going to understand. And that's, I think the reason why we don't speak about it is because we think that nobody, I always thought nobody would understand. Yeah. And so I wouldn't speak about it. Mm. Um, but what I noticed when I started to speak about it is that 
more people came to me and said, I'm dealing with the same thing. And that was such a beautiful thing because suddenly you're part of a community. And that's really important to have that support system. It's taken that step, isn't it, to, to speak out. And, and that's what's beautiful about you sharing it, you know, with us tonight and on your own Instagram, because there will be someone else out there that goes, I'm going through the same. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I get yeah. it. Um, and, you, and it makes you realise you're not alone. Um, yeah. And I think that's what I've realised this year, that, you know, we're all struggling, you know, whether it's financially because of not being able to work or whether it's mentally because, you know, just being trapped indoors, not being able to hug your family and friends. Um, we're all going yeah. through it. So, so thank you again for sharing that. That's wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. And um, I hope those of you that are watching are able to sort of take some of those techniques and, and use them within our, your own life uh, to be able to help through difficult moments. Um, now, I wanted to ask, um, you mentioned before about checking your inner circle. Why is that important to make sure people who you're surrounding yourself with are, have got your back, uh, are supporting you, especially when you may have suffered with you know, depression and people out there? Why is that important? Because, you know, I, I never felt like I fit in. I still don't feel like I fit in. I'm, I'm kind of weird. Um, but, um, okay. yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I do think that a lot of people feel like they don't fit in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, also what I notice is that it all goes together with not, not sharing and not speaking because you feel like it's going to be weird if you talk about things that no one is talking about. And I didn't speak back in the day after, um, I attempted suicide because, no one in my environment was speaking about it. Um, And when I came out with it, they all treated me. I felt like I was being treated as if I was strange because no one wanted to talk about it. So it felt me, it made me feel really alone. I was so lonely. Um, And I could have stayed in the same situation, but I do always think if a situation doesn't work for you anymore, you got to change the situation because it's not your fault. It's not you. It's never you. You just got to create a new situation for yourself. Oh, um, so that's what I call a geographical cure. Okay. Just go somewhere else right. and find the people because then suddenly you notice, hey, wait a minute. It wasn't me at all. Okay. I have a community here and I have that support system and people do understand. Mm. You just got to find the right, right people. Yeah. And do you think that's why big cities tend to, for people who are, you know, struggling, maybe like, you know, a smaller a city and um, tend to come to say London or Paris or somewhere where there's, there's different cultures, you know, different beliefs. Um, <laughs> do you think that's why people tend to, yeah. to flock to bigger cities? Because you went to um, the Netherlands, right? Is that right? Uh, I, 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 um, I stayed in the Netherlands, but I went to a different city. Um, yes, yes, um, before I moved to London. But there's two things that I think about uh, uh, big cities, because I used to work as a project manager, and I was responsible for creating greener cities. Yeah. Um, and what I noticed was that, yes, big, big cities, there are people who are very open-minded. Um, so if you're ambitious and open-minded, you go to the big city because there's so many people with different perspectives there and someone might have your perspective you know uh, that's such a beautiful thing at the same time what i do notice about big c- cities there's this paradox going on it's the bigger the city the higher the anonymity rate and also the higher the loneliness rate sure. um sometimes it might be hard in big cities to make new friends because the people who live there already have their own community yes um so it could be harder but um that that's what i do notice yeah. i think um it might be perseverance or just like trying maybe um yeah, yeah. i didn't think of it that way you're right but yeah, <laughs> you've got <a> point. yeah. <laughs> i love it <laughs> now we have got um a couple of fun questions to sort of end the show um before mm. we do, I thought, this is so embarrassing, I thought I had the right charger. I've got a Samsung charger and I actually need my iPhone charger and my phone's about to die. So give me 30 (sighs) seconds, everyone. This does never happen because it's live and my team are next door. I can't see that. (laughs) Oh no. Give me 30 seconds. In the the meantime, I'm gonna sing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. Thank 
you, thank you, thank you. I just did not want it to die. I was like, I cannot have this die. And it's, it's lasted. But you know when your iPhone tells you like that 5%, you think any minute now it could cut. So And you panic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> live TV, live on Instagram. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, we're going to have to end it there, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I know we, we went into it there. Um, but I know you've definitely, you know, you've helped me and given me some sort of tips that I'll be able to use, um, especially, you know, when you're having those sort of dark moments in life and you're just feeling, you know, down um, and just being able to go, just get through 24 hours, you know, another day, another day. Um, but before we go, we want to ask what's next for you? Um, because we want to see you. We want to know what, you know, what's next? Where can we catch you? What's, what have you got planned for this year? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I'm happy that everything is like starting up again and, you know, uh, more self tapes, more auditions. Yeah. Um, but I do have a new project, which is going to be a short film um, in the Netherlands. We're going to shoot it in the Netherlands. So that's very exciting. Um, and then I'm focusing on writing. I have a very special, special project coming up, but I can't say anything oh. about it. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to say it's going to be very uncomfortable, which is good. Cool. We like uncomfortable. I think it's good. It makes people talk. I think that, you know, and then that's yes. where conversations start and then people then start to think outside the box that's really good oh, i'm excited but we'll watch out for that um so thank you thank you again for being on the show and um, before we go though we've got a couple of fun questions of would you rather questions okay so we we'll guess this at the end of the show um so question number one <laughs> would you rather go so go into the past to meet your ancestors or go into the future to meet your grandchildren or relatives from the future. Wow, mm. that is such a hard question. The production team put this together, so. Oh. <laughs> um, I am going to say future. Okay, cool, I like. Yes. For those of you that want, yes. what would you do? Put your comments below, let us see. And also, thank you for everyone for commenting um, throughout the show. It's been a pleasure and lovely seeing some of your comments. Um, okay, so next question. And don't forget, you can answer along with these two if you're watching. So, um, would you rather have more time or more money? <laughs> These difficult questions. <laughs> um, more time, because it, it will mean more time with the people I love. So it's going to be more time. Oh, I love that. Um, and they're never right or wrong, these questions. So, you know, it's just what we do. Uh, yeah. Would you rather talk to animals or speak a foreign language? Talk to animals. Yeah? I'd love that. Yeah. I'd love to see yeah. a dog and find out what he really wants. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's also good not to know, yeah, but. <laughs> um, and thank you. You know, you said more time. I love it. Um, Camilla said more money. I think I'd say more money. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, and talk to animals. But again, they're not right or wrong. It's just what we feel. Um, yeah. Oh, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for for being and spending your time on the show with us. Um, and thank you for those of you that have been watching throughout or nipping in and out and been commenting as well and um, appreciate your time uh, on here but catch us again soon um on uh Herbal smash tv don't forget you can watch all our, our past videos you can even catch this video later on um on urban smash tvs uh, on instagram and it will also be on youtube as well but once again thank you to all of you thank you again raksha and um yeah enjoy. thank have you have a good weekend everyone <laughs> speak to you soon take care Bye-bye. <laughs>